Hello my brothers and sisters of the Order, welcome back to the Order and Celtic Templar, and today y'all for this, uh, well, video what we're gonna, gonna do is now a Q&A video, which is highly requested by y'all, and uh, I asked y'all in the community area to send me a uh, message here, like a question, and see which, uh, well, what we would end up talking about. Now, uh, and such, I asked y'all to, uh, well, give me any question you wanted to, me to answer, and, uh, and such, that's what we're going to actually do. Now, uh, what we're going to do is go from the bottom up, and already I see a couple of, actually like one or, yeah, I think it's like this one that is very acidine, but I'll actually have to answer it anyways. <clears throat> anyways, so from the bottom up, we're going to be going, so let's see, uh, Beans Uchilla is actually asked, why is my channel named Celtic Templar? Okay, that's actually a very good question. Uh, the reason I call myself Celtic Templar is because of one major reason, is because of my ancient Celtic ancestry. Uh, one, to the fact I have ancient Celtic ancestry from Great Britain or Britannia, such as Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Man, Britannia, and as well probably from Gaul and such. So, pretty much, yeah. Uh, Templar was actually because for one major reason. They are actually known to be called the Knights of the Poor Knights of Solomon, or as the Poor Knights of Christ. But however, they are also known to even be known as the Keepers of the Secret Knowledge. So and such, I am actually calling myself the Keeper of the Ancient Knowledge, or the Keeper of the Ancient K Secret Knowledges. So, Celtic for Ancient Past, and Templar for the fast, for the Keeper of the Secrets. I know people would probably say, Templar, why don't you just name it something like Keeper of Knowledge, Keeper of Secrets? Eh, that doesn't exactly, uh, well, keep into a form that interests people, I think. Because one, I've actually tried typing this up, and apparently also I've even checked on YouTube that there are a couple of places that actually already have that on there, sadly. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Famed God asks, what is your real name? Okay, this one, uh, I can answer, but as well, I will put it in slight bit of a riddle for you. And in such, this is kind of easy to look up. Literally, I am not kidding. Uh, in fact, I actually have given my real name out on, uh, my, uh, how-to video on how to dress as an Irish kern. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know, that sounds weird, but yeah. Uh, but... And such, I give a little bit of a hint on what it is. Such as, my first name being He Who Dances With Wolves, which is an Irish, uh, which is a Celto-Irish name. It, which, this is actually, I'm not kidding, this is what it means, the definition of it means He Who Dances With Wolves. And in fact, it's actually been used in the movie Highlander. In fact, my parents named me after one of the characters. So, uh, yeah, I... That's a little bit of an easy one there. And my surname, that one is, well, a Scandinavian name. However, it actually has been used in English, Scottish, and German, and Swedish cultures. And it actually is the last word meaning son of. Meaning, my father's name was this, or something like that, and my last name is son. So and such, I am son of such and such person. Uh, for example, when we take a look at the name Jefferson, we actually see that's a Viking name because of the sun on the end. So, in such, my, and in such, the, uh, my last name is actually used in the Scottish clan of Gunn. That's right, the Highlands. The very Highlands. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, now people would say, to about it, it didn't, doesn't sound like it was, uh, uh, well, entirely answered. Well, here's the thing, there are a lot of people out here that will try and uh, harass me online. Literally, I have actually dealt with a couple of them. So, yeah, I'm not exactly going to fully answer that one unless I can. So I put it in a rhyme for y'all. Just remember, it. my first name is He Who Dances With Wolves. And in such, my parents named me after one of the characters from Highlander. 
and my surname is that of a Viking name, such as from Scandinavia, that of which is also seen and looked in the Scottish clan of Gunn. So, yeah, there's a little, little, little bit of a look up for you. Okay, uh, <laughs> really commented, do you play Skyrim? Sadly, no, not anymore. I think I got bored of it a while back because it does got so uh, kind of boring. And <laughs> I don't, I don't remember why I stopped playing it. I really don't. There is, I don't have any explanation for it. So sorry about that. Okay, Pudes asks, "Are you a member of the KKK?" Seriously? Okay, one, just because a guy is white doesn't mean he's part of the Ku Klux Klan. Second, just because the guy has a confederate flag doesn't mean he's part of the Ku Klux Klan. Three, just because the guy ends up shaving his head doesn't mean he's part of the Ku Klux Klan. Four, just because a guy lives in Texas doesn't mean he's part of the Ku Klux Klan. Five, just because a guy has this on his shield and such doesn't mean he's part of the Ku Klux Klan. For one, I am not part of the Ku Klux Klan for major reasons. I am Catholic, damn it! And in such, here in Texas, we really don't like the Ku Klux Klan. And the fact is, my grandfather fought in the 4th Texas Infantry, which I actually, I have to put this out here, he was also born in Iowa, a major abolitionist state. He fought for the Confederacy, or the Republic of Texas, because he was fighting for his home to actually be an independent nation against the Union. Major thing I have to put out here is, when people automatically think that the Confederate flag means a symbol of racism, doesn't mean it means that. For example, that's like saying that every black person is a thug. Or that it's like saying like uh, Hebrews are all uh, thieves that hide money. See, that is beyond racist right there. Because one, and the major thing is, Ispriten Ashtir Eradin in Hebrew, Mindan Krusmata. Or, as I was about to say in pretty much English, my great grandmother fled from the so none other than Nationalist Socialist Germany. And she was a Hebrew. Yeah, I bet you're really real bad about that one now, aren't you? Because I don't know if he was trying to comment this as an asinine joke or. If he really didn't know. Although still, I, I really would advise never actually asking someone this if you're asking for a Q&A video again. Because one, this could actually probably get your ass kicked. Okay. Uh, Dr. Gunster asked, do you watch anime? Yes, I actually do watch anime. Though it depends on the anime. Because one... I have seen weird shit come from anime that makes no damn sense. Now, maybe you might ask, Tim, what do you mean by that? Seriously, have you never seen JoJo? There is no meaning for any of that. It's as gay as hell. That makes no sense whatsoever. I'm, like, I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding. I only saw it like a couple of episodes, and this is how I saw it. Oh, let me stand like a... Freaking gay pillows. Ugh. Literally, the only thing that they're missing from that is them sucking dick. I'm not kidding. That's what it looks like it's going to happen in any second. Unfortunately, this uh, anime was made, or the re uh, animation of JoJo was made at least about during the years when anime was going through uh, homosexuality phase, which really took me off anime for a while. Although... Uh, when it comes down to it, I do love anime, depending on the anime, as I said. However, majority of it always has to be either be horror or history-related or action-related. But the majority of it is always history, for one major reason, I am a fan of history. In fact, my favorite show right now is Vinland Saga. However, prior before it was made, it was Berserk. Yes, I'm a huge Berserk fan for when I was very young. And I still actually am, because one, it is sort of actually based on uh, historical events that took place in the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, in which I might need to go back into uh, history and anime probably soon, so yeah. Okay, 
Black and Yellow asks, are you Irish? Sadly, I am not from Ireland. I was born here in the Re Republic of Texas, uh, but in such, I do have Irish roots or Irish background from both my mother and my father's mother's side, uh, which I don't know the logistics of the story, but apparently I think my uh, family members might have been Anglo-Irish, for example, that of which might have married an Irish woman or an Irish man. It's hard to say how it would all go, but yeah. Uh, but I think my grandmother's parents' uh, relatives actually fled Ireland during the time of the potato famine. So, yeah. Okay, Celtic Perspective asks, Do you have pets? If not, what pet would you like to have? Okay, this is actually a question I uh, can't answer. I used to own at least four dogs, uh, but prior before that, it was my parents who had two dogs, which one was a blue healer and another one was a mutt. And I, one of was the girl was named Stanzi, which was the blue healer, and they named the mutt uh, Frodo after Frodo's hair from the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I know that was not much of a good idea of naming. <laughs> uh, but then a while later I ended up getting a another blue healer uh, known as Ashley. I think we named her that because of her silverish hair. So yeah, she was uh, quite a rowdy dog. And literally you do not want to actually uh, hold the leash with her because she will take off like a freaking speeding bullet. Especially after a car. Uh, she did get hit by a car once, but luckily she survived, thank God, and she lived up to the ripe old age of 16 to 17 years old, which that's big in dog ears. Uh, the next dog we had after her, like, uh, like soon after I got Ashley, I ended up getting another dog, known, uh, which we later named Alex or Alexandria, uh, which I don't know which one of it was me or my mother that named her that, but she was not brave. Uh, my mother thought she was a boxer slash mastiff mix, but she was act and what she always named her her big lips. <laughs> I don't know why, but actually she was actually a uh, I want a uh, blue cur, which is a rare hunting dog here in Texas. Although when we found her, she was at my old elementary school, and she was scared. I decided to to tell my mother we should take her in, and, well, she became part of the family. Although, she she and Ashley ended up living the rest of their days out in uh, Iowa after my mother's passing, and in such, they both lived up to the age of 17 or 16 years old, which is still up there in dog years. As well, a couple of years after me and my mother got ourselves Ashley and Alex, we then got ourselves another dog, a rescue dog from my mother's work, and... We, I decided to name him Duncan. No, not after Tim Duncan, although that was a little bit of a guess, uh, but after King Duncan of Scotland. And in such, uh, I named him that as Duncan, although I would have called him Spot, because he only had the one spot, and it was right on his butt. I'm not kidding. That's actually how it was. He was a red healer, blue healer mix, and... His uh, hair was nothing like Ashley's hair. Ashley's hair was like a smooth feel. Duncan's hair, it was like uh, like somebody took a... Uh, <laughs> like somebody just uh, brushed their hand in like, some hair gel and started messing around with your kid's head. That's actually how it looked. <laughs> Although it was like their hairs were like barbs, literally. I'm not kidding. Because they would get into all my clothes... And I had to remove them all with hand, and I even used a lint remover. It did not work that much. It was kind of funny. Uh, but, yeah, I always actually, uh, always, uh, well, uh, gave him a butt rub or a butt scratch on that spot, and he would automatically start doing his uh, tongue routine on his nose. I don't know why, but I think it was some weird reaction. Although, the people who had him... They snipped off his uh, thumbs and his tail, which was kind of messed up. Because, one, if you're going to do that to a dog, it's just because it looks cool, doesn't know it. Just show, like, you don't treat your dog right. Uh, 
But then after him is another rescue dog that my mother found uh, at when she ended up working at Walmart. She ended up finding these dogs right behind a dumpster that apparently some jackass threw out. And here's the thing. If you people end up throwing away a dog, a little puppy dog, just because you didn't want your dog to get bred, here's the thing. Fix your dog. And it's such... Because, yeah, I get really pissed when people do that to an innocent animal. If I see an innocent animal being mistreated by someone, I will probably go berserker on their ass. <laughs> but, yeah, that's probably just me. Uh, one major thing I have to put out here is to the fact that uh, we later named him Gabriel and such. He had a very rough time when he started with us. Apparently he had a parasite, but luckily he survived. Although, as I said, after my mother's passing, uh, both Duncan and Gabriel were given to some homes here in Texas, thank God. And unfortunately, I heard about a year later after that happened, apparently Gabriel uh, ended up uh, rolling in some cow dung. I don't know what he was. I think it was actually a golden retriever. <laughs> oh, but that, I'm glad I wasn't the guy who was owning him at that time. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, if I had to actually have myself a dog today and such, there would be a different variety of animals that are a uh, dog I would end up having. For example, I when it comes to small dogs, there are a small few I would ever consider having as a dog. For one, if it's a chihuahua, keep that thing away from me, because I, I no offense to any of y'all who actually own one, but... Those things are, uh, <laughs> to me, those things are nothing more than a barking rat. I'm not kidding. I, I have actually seen chihuahuas, and they bark like crazy. In fact, I'm always this close to actually always drop kicking one right across a fence. That may sound messed up, but here's the thing. If you had to deal with chihuahuas like I have, you would probably say the same thing. Uh... But when it comes to small dogs, I would have to say my small dog choice would have to be a bulldog, French bulldog, uh, a pug, or a Boston Terrier, which uh, my aunt actually has one of them, which I actually do love and such, and they always name the dog Johanna. I don't know why, but they always name her Johanna. Every time it's always a girl and it's always Johanna, 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 Johanna. And I think they have at least, this is their fourth Johanna, third Johanna, give or take. So, yeah. Uh, but other type of other dogs, such as medium dogs, hell yes. And big dogs, much hell yes. For one, they love to be lap dogs, and there's so much of them to love. Like Great Danes, an Irish design. I, I can never remember these guys, their uh, full uh, name, uh, what they're called. But I just call it the Irish Mutt Hound. Because, one, you gotta love that shaggy dog hair. And in such, uh, if I had a dog like that, I would probably name it Fenrir after the wolf. Because, one, you gotta admit that would actually be inspiring. Or after uh, the hound that ended up helping out, uh, I forget the hound's name, but I remember that it ended up being used in uh, one of J.R.R. Tolkien's books in the Cimmerillion. I just can never remember it. Uh, it helped out Baron and Luthien. Yes, I'm a huge uh, Lord of the Ring geek. But, yeah, I would have to name him after that as well. Uh, but, in such, though, my entirety of dogs, I am a big dog guy. Eh, in such, I do love a lot of dogs. I love animals and such. And as well, I do have what you might call a weird phase or a weird type feel. For example, my mother had tarantulas when she was young. And these were no normal tarantulas, ladies and gentlemen. These were a Texas brownback. These were as big as my hand. Yeah. And in fact, my uh, aunt, my mother's sister, was scared of those damn things at the time. That she would tell her to throw them away. <laughs> I think my mother actually would end up uh, using them against her. I know, sisterly love. <laughs> oh, God. Which I always kind of wonder how the hell my mother and my aunt are even related. Because, one, they do not share anything. Uh, but, yeah. 
but yeah, when it comes to dogs, I'm major dog guy. Cats, I used to actually own a cat or so. I named it Black Sea. Yeah, keep me, give me some credit. This was back when I was very young, so I didn't know that much about name calling. So yeah, I got that from my parents. I just named him that because, one, he looked uh, like, well, he was fully black except for the white parts in his body. My mother wanted to call him Alfred. I know, she was also into Batman. <laughs> it's kind of stupid. Although, now that I think about it, that actually does sound a little bit better now that I think about it. Uh, although, one thing I don't like about cats is the uh, occasional they knock stuff over, which, in my line of use, I don't think that will be a good idea. So, yeah. Uh, uh, but, in such, yes, I would mostly own a dog. Uh, what if it was a bear? Probably like an endangered cub or whatever, and it needed to be uh, rescued or whatever. Yes, I would actually own myself a bear, a wolf, hell, even a rabbit. If it's a rescue, I would immediately, uh, well, not own it, but make it part of the family. Although, I know one thing, if it would be a bear, I would probably name it Bear, because one... <laughs> it's a fucking bear. <laughs> Although, maybe I should name it Bjorn after the Hobbit films and such. Uh, or Bjorn. Uh, knowing one thing, though, I would have him probably sit in the living room or probably wherever he wants to. But knowing one thing, when he gets bigger, holy crap, that's going to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> okay. Uh, Robert Rodriguez asked, What is your favorite all-time war movie? And your favorite movie, such type gladiator, history, battle type movie? Hmm. Okay, uh, my favorite war movie, that's, uh, that's a tough one. Um, because, one, I would have to say, uh, because one, I would like to say the medieval type warfare, but not as much as I would love the, uh, such as the modern combat ones. Such as We Were Soldiers or uh, Black Hawk Down, which is still one of my favorites. So I had to say Black Hawk Down is one of my favorites. Oh, now pretty much a lot of people would say, Oh, tell me, why wouldn't it be Saving Private Ryan? Well, for one, Saving Private Ryan was my favorite way back then. But the thing is, anything that had the same director who... Because anything that had the director who made uh, Saving Private Ryan hands down any one of those war films that he made, like Gladiator... Uh, we were soldier. Uh, no, he wasn't. We were such. <laughs> My mind's all a blaze right now. Uh, Sam Perry Ryan, uh, as well as the uh, uh, infamous uh, Black Hawk Down. I, because one, a lot of his films he made are pretty much my favorites. Uh, but yeah, I think I had to go with Black Hawk Down because one, it shows the one major thing. When it comes to modern day soldiers, it actually shows the brotherhood and the bond that these soldiers all hold together. And it's which, they stand together and they die together. And that actually shows what these guys are. And it's such, I actually had to love this type of group because one, this actually shows that these were rangers. These were Delta Force. These guys were tough as balls. Well, actually, wait a minute. Uh, tough as nails. I would actually have to say tough as balls, but I know one thing, women like to kick some guys in there, so I'm not going to go there. <laughs> uh, uh, but the major reason I love that film is especially the song at the very end, which is still one of my favorites. Uh, if none of y'all know what I'm talking about, I'll leave a link down below for y'all, so that way you can understand of why I love that song, because one, it's an Irish uh, liberation song or uh, Irish Freedom Song and such, uh, which is called The Minstrel Boy, which I highly recommend listening to, because one, in fact, that's a song I would love to hear at my funeral. <laughs> that's just me. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Trafer Mister asks, why does your intro say Welcome to the Order? Well, like every YouTube channel, we always have to have our own type of way at explaining 
to welcome us into the area. For example, the Metatron has, well, the Metatron. Uh, Skalagrim has his Skalagrim design. Shad from Shadiversity has Shadiversity, which means you're, well, members of his university, of the, you could call it that, or universe. Uh, but I do my intro with the order, or welcome to the order, as meaning welcome to the Brotherhood, or welcome to the channel. Which is what the or which is what the channel is. It is the order, and all of y'all that subscribe into the channel are technically part of the Celtic Templar order, or in this case, the P Celtic Templar channel. Now that sounds weird. It sounds cult-like, but I don't view it like that because one, you gotta gotta love it a little bit because one, it makes you feel like you're part of a Templar order, for example. So yeah. Okay. Celtic Perspective asks, uh, what inspired you to start the channel? Uh, the reason I decided to start the channel was, one, it was first started as a project we had in my English subject, I think, which we had to do something, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to do more than just uh, be part of this system. Although, originally, my channel wasn't called Celtic Templar, it was called something else. I think it was originally my name. Uh, and when I started it, I for originally spoke in, I think, Ancient Germanic, which is not easy to do, or in this case, Old English. Like, literally, I was reading the Old Scripture of Old English on Beowulf. Yes, but this was back when my English editor, which I hope she's still listening and such, because one, I I think I only did this once, and I'm sad to say I had to delete the file because I don't know why I deleted it. I think was because it didn't get much views, or because it was old and such, and it was uh, un uninspiring. But however, I'll probably have to do it again, probably sometime. I'll probably have to. Uh, do that video probably another time. Probably in this case, right in front of a uh, outside, in front of a fire, and you see, just hear me talking in ancient Germanic while ain't wearing Germanic style clothing and such. Oh, 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 that sounds horrifying now that I think about it. But it also sounds really cool. But the reason I kept using the uh, channel onward along after it was because of one major reason. I loved history. I wanted people to understand history correctly. Sadly, there were not many people that liked it at first, but as I saw it, my channel started to grow more and more each year, and I'm happy about it. And the fact is, I want people to learn history. Because one, I'm kind of tired of idiot Hollywood doing stupid things, putting stupid things online and all this. In fact, Whenever I saw YouTube, it's all, like, literally, literally, I'm not kidding. When originally I saw YouTube, it was just a bunch of idiots doing something stupid just to get famous. Like, jumping into a cactus. Or, worse, uh, kicking each other in the balls. Yeah, that may be how Jackass got famous, but that's not how I got famous. That's not how I'm planning on doing that. Uh -uh. And of which, I'm always tired about the History Channel. Because, one... I remember when the History Channel talked about history and not this reality drama! Literally, they actually ruined the History Channel every second. And, in fact, this is coming from a guy who watched the early uh, seasons of Vikings before it got really, really, really stupid. Now, and such... I wanted people to understand history correctly. In fact, if we saw Barbarians Rising... Don't watch it. There are some a lot of things they got wrong as well with Texas Rising. That really pissed me off. For one, I'm a Texan, and us Texans hated that. There's a reason why it's not being shown anymore. And the fact is, I used to watch the History Channel so many times that I learned history from it rather than my teachers, who pretty much were just wanting to teach idiot crap. For example, I had a uh, well a like, this actually first happened to me in middle school, and, and such, it was for Texas history, and guess what? Now, before anyone starts saying, uh-oh, this is not going to go well, well, you're pretty much right. The 
teacher was, I think, I don't know what he was, a substitute or whatever, and, and such, he just automatically went away from Texas history and automatically started talking about black history only. Which made no damn sense. For one, I put myself into a class for Texas history. I had to report it to my mother. I told my mother about this, and she went ballistic on him. I don't know what happened to him. I think he might have gotten fired after a while because, one, we didn't see him after a while. And it wasn't just me. It was also a couple hundred other parents that were also very upset. And not just me. Uh, me and my mother that were upset, but even uh, one of my best friends, Marcus, who which was uh, African-American, he himself got himself in that class to learn Texas history, not whatever the hell this guy was trying to teach. And, and fortunately, there are a lot of stupid idiots out there that actually want to teach their own idiot history and go away from the scripts or go away from the true form of history. For example, take a look at uh, Ancient Aliens. That's not even history, yet it's on the History Channel. I don't even know how the hell that show is even still around, because one, that show should not be on anymore. Uh, but to the major form also, it even got worse in high school when I had another black history teacher, who, which was a gym teacher, trying to teach black history only. I had to report him more than hundreds of times. He was finally actually taken out of the uh, history class after my uh, year with him. And the fact is, he even got reprimanded uh, more than once, I heard. And the fact is, he actually thought he was funny. He really wasn't. He was just an idiot trying to play stupid. I really didn't find the guy funny. In fact, I found him very racist. And, and such, he... I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding, because literally... He really did not know anything about history. And the worst part is, I'm the one that got yelled at by him more than once. And he later, I'm pretty much hoping he probably got his ass kicked by the school system. Because one, schools, you don't allow idiots to teach history. It'd be like, well, having a communist teach government. Yeah, that's not going to go well. Uh, or it'd be like, well... A person who knows nothing about English, like a German, speaking English. Yeah, try learning that! Or a Spanish teacher trying to speak German, which I actually had this amazing uh, German teacher. I, I can't remember her name, damn it. Oh. But yeah, she both spoke Spanish, English, and German, which I am happy to have actually taken her class. Sadly, though, there were a lot of asinine students there. But that's, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the reason I started the channel is because I want history to stay history. I don't want people to learn idiot crap because, one, there are a lot of idiots out there that think they know history and then they just start speaking nonsense. For example, I think there is some idiot TikToker who's trying to talk about the history of Rome and she knows nothing about the history of Rome. In fact, the Metatron has actually done a, uh, well... A ranting video on her, which, thank you Metatron, because one, this woman he actually stated that the, uh, that Rome, uh, was once connected to the sea and such, and the, that the Great Roman Column, and such, so, the one of the Great Roman Columns has a steroid, which yes, it has a steroid, which they do, most of them do, and she stated it was a lighthouse. There's some stupidity. I cannot explain how stupid she actually would be. But that's my point. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of idiots out there that don't know history, and they ruin it for everyone else. So yeah, I wanted to create the channel to, for people to learn history as the way it's supposed to be. How warriors were meant to dress in such and all this. So, yeah. Uh, oh, Celtic Perspective actually also asked... Uh, what was your favorite video to make? Ah, uh, fuck. Uh, that's a tough one. It would either have to be one of my weapon and test uh, review and testing videos or my uh, how to dress videos. Probably my Viking or housecarl ones. 
I don't know why. That's just me. That's just me. Uh, I'm just saying. Although, that's just so far, but I might, I don't know, I, I still feel like maybe I'm more of a Celtic guy, but I'm mostly a, a Viking type feel. I don't know why. But, yeah, that's actually a good question. Um, okay. Okay, Michael Elista actually asked, if you were to be thrown into war, what weapons of choice would you be taking? Armor, shield, sword, dagger, potions. Also, what would you eat to survive? And would you form a group or army of one? Oh, I like this one a lot. Uh, to answer that, I would have to say, when it comes down to it, being thrown into warfare, when it comes to my armor, I would have to wear my, well, I would have to say something, the armor would have to be something from the Viking culture or something like that, like something from the Scandinavia, the Kievan Rus, or to the, uh, said, uh, Ranging Guard. For major reasons, for the fact that this armor was light, it's effective, it's perfect, so what would this be? It would be, well, I'll leave links down below if any of y'all uh, don't know what I'm talking about, but yes, and, and such. I would probably make myself somewhat look near identical to that of a house Carl. Uh, as I said, near identical, but not entirely. But in such, I would have to wear, like, well, Viking style attire with a jerkin or two covering my body, which is known as soft armor. Then I would wear a coat of mail or shirt of mail that I love so much. Then I would probably wear my new laminar uh, type body armor over that. And as well, for my arms and uh, legs, I would have to wear these. These are van braces, which, uh, okay, this, uh, well, these are leg van braces would go on my leg, and these are my arm van braces which go on my arm. So yeah, I would wear these uh, for to protect my uh, type arm, like so. So yeah, now many people would say, so why don't you just wear this thing? So well, this thing actually is a problem with the glove. That's the only problem. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> but for my helmet, I would have to probably say the uh, Norman Helm and the Coif. My favorite type of gear I like to wear like that. For one, it feels awesome while wearing it. Because one, if you wear that, you can understand why I love it. Especially with the Norman style nasal helm and such. The feel of it, it feels pretty much empowering almost. <laughs> uh, but... When it comes to my shield, it would either have to be this heater shield or my Norman kite shield that I love so much, which I will leave links of different how-to videos and such, uh, and as well other videos that of which of the equipment I will be using. So yeah, uh, but uh, let's see, he also asked, uh, what was it? Because yeah, that's what I would use for shields and armor. Uh, now, let's see, for my weapons, that uh, would have to be, my primary weapon would have to be my hammer, Glamgring, the faux hammer. Yes, I named it after uh, Gandalf's sword. For one, this is a real war, this is a real hammer, <laughs> and this thing does extreme damage, as you all saw in my videos. And this thing, hoo -hoo -hoo, this will definitely do some damage. And one, I want to put this out here. This will be known as the beater, the biter, the head splitter, and such. So yeah, this will be pretty much a good weapon for my enemies to dive by. <laughs> but that would be my primary. For my secondary primary weapon, I would have to go with something like an axe. Pretty much one of these. This, though, would be my throwing axe, or my regular, everyday uh, axe, like I would just be used for camping. This, though, would be my weapon for choice for the main battle. Because, one, y'all saw the power that was in this in my testing video, and it did some damage to that helmet. So, it doesn't matter if my opponent is wearing good armor, this thing's gonna do some damage to him. So, yeah my two main weapons are going to be extremely 
heavy hitters. I know. Uh, although, when it comes down to my sword, I'm kind of split between my Viking sword and my early Germanic sword. For one, I love both of these bad boys. I love the feel of my Viking sword, because one, it's light and it's effective enough, and it has a good reach and a tip point for thrusting use, which that I really do love, the feel of it and such. Because one, Viking swords were not heavy, they were not cumbersome, they were light and effective for perfect reasons. Because one, Viking swords, they look awesome, I know. Uh, although, I would love to use my Germanic sword like this. Because one, this thing is a heavy hitter. This is a Germanic falcata. So, this means it will do heavy hitting no matter what, and it will break the body underneath the armor. So, this thing would just do a good swinging motion and pretty much cut off someone's head. So, yeah, that's a good point to it. Even if it doesn't make contact with the head, it will probably break the body underneath its armor. So, in other words, your neck it will pretty much have broken neck bones, and you'll probably die suffocating. Yeah, not exactly the best way to go, I know. And as which, when it comes to my knife, probably my CX, or sax. Which is just as long as my uh, uh, sword here. Actually, I found out, because literally, I'm not kidding, these things are, it's almost near identically as long. Although this has a tapering point for I me mean, to thrust with. However, if we know one thing from sixes, you actually even use underneath the shield, that way I get right into the guy's groin, and... Yeah, ah. Uh, every time I talk about that, I think my balls just clench up. So, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I would make myself look somewhat near identical to how I just explained. If any of y'all want to see videos on the weapons I and armor I was talking about and showed, I highly recommend doing so. Uh, but now, when it comes to making my, like, what food would I use... Uh, what food would I eat? Well, pretty much that is, would actually have to be bacon or a dried meat. Dried meat could actually keep you alive for a long while. It, for example, if any of y'all have ever heard of jerky, guess what? You could actually keep using that for about a year and it could never go bad. So and such, I would actually use that. Although, if I had a choice to pillaging my opponents and such, I would eat some bread and here and there. But when it comes to drink, that would... I'm not a big alcoholic, so I probably would avoid that entirely. Although, I would probably uh, just drink whatever I could get my hands on. Though, it's just up to my own design of what I end up finding. Probably pretty much water. So, yeah. One of the most horrifying things I want to put out here, though, is the fact I could probably take a uh, pig or a boar and such that I killed, and I could probably end up feasting on that for about a month or such like that, or probably a year, without any big deal. For example, uh, beef jerky, if you actually, like, for example, a bag of beef jerky, you could probably eat that for a full week without any problems. So that's a good example to it, since it's airlock sealed. But however, though, uh, when it comes down to it, dried meat would actually be a good example. Dried meat actually is still being used to this day for some points in military or some cultures, because one, they probably don't have any refrigerators. Although there is salted pork or salted meat I would have to go with, which is that's another version, only salted. However, you do got to be careful with that. Uh, and then he also asked... And would you form a group or army of one? Okay, I probably would form a group to probably protect my hide. However, I'd probably be the berserker type guy in the middle of the battle. For one, I'm what you might call a berserker, the berserker's wrath in me. So and such, I wouldn't show any mercy to my opponents. I'd probably be that guy that automatically has a plan, and my plan is that I be somewhat of the distraction or the heavy hitter while my Iranian allies end up attacking and flanking the, my opponents, or our opponents entirely. 
So, uh, yeah, when it comes down to it, I would probably be the Berserker unit, or the Berserker in the entire uh, military force. So it's such, you, if you're going to be facing me on the battlefield, you might as well go ahead and run away before I get glam green on you. Because <laughs> one, glam green the full hammer hasn't tasted blood in a while. <laughs> but, yeah, y'all, hopefully that answers all your all's questions. Hopefully you like and subscribe this, and as well, also see our next videos up, coming up soon. Uh, we'll probably do another Q&A video probably by December, I want to say, give or take. So, yeah. Uh, but if any of y'all have any other questions that uh, wanted to have answered during this day and you didn't have enough time, well, don't worry. You have until December to do so. Anyways, guys, it's been Celtic Templar. Hope to see y'all in the next one. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.